Adam is back, so the uh, Facebook Live is working correctly tonight. <laughs> Whoever saw it Sunday night, I think it was messed up. Do you see it? That was me. So. <laughs> as long as you listened to it and didn't look, it was okay. Okay. Just got some few items here before we get going. Remember that the new quarter starts Sunday. Uh, if you haven't got your material yet, it's over uh, in the visual aids room on that. There are some new directories in the back that you can pick up. Uh, no pictures in it. We just got updated addresses in it for everybody. So uh, grab me one of those. It's on the uh, right side side as you go out on that. Uh, some uh, other updates. If you haven't noticed, we've got an automatic dispenser for hand sanitizer in the back that you can use now. Uh, we've got plenty of sanitizer, so if some of you have some those little travel size and run out, just holler and we can refill that for you. Uh, we got three gallons back there, so it'll last for a while. Some updates uh, for our prayer list. Uh, Cleo was taken to the ER. Uh, uh, she had fallen several times, and they said, and uh, they came out with a, what she had was a bad sinus infection. <coughs> So I need to remember Cleo. And then uh, Sandy Rickman's aunt's husband, Barbara. Uh, her husband, Roy Nail, from the Keelan area, passed away Monday from COVID complications. Uh, Barbara and Roy were both members of the Keelan uh, congregation there. So I need to remember Sandy's family on that. Don Eubanks was moved to the VA in St. Louis with breathing issues from COVID. So we need to remember them. Adam's 92-year-old grandmother tested positive for COVID. Right now she's asymptomatic. Uh, so, and then she's living in a nursing home there in Montgomery, Alabama. So we need to remember her in your prayers. And we uh, announced Sunday that uh, Donna Moore's husband, who was in the VA for COVID, is now at home recovering. So uh, we continue to remember them. And the Pinkerton family and Ron Johnson's family uh, need to remember them. They both uh, lost loved ones. Uh, Louise Pinkerton passed away recently, and uh, Ron's mother, Mary Swinger, passed away remember them and also Roxanne Carson uh, going through some rough times right now after some uh, cancer treatments. And then Erica Summerfield requested prayers for her family. They've got some COVID issues and some other problems at home so they requested some prayers for their family. Those are the updates. I've got anything else? Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity we have to come and study your word and worship you in a song to praise you. Father, be with our country as we go through this terrible virus. Help us to find a cure for it. We've lost hundreds of thousands of people already. We ask you, Father, be with us, strengthen us, encourage us, help us to be better servants to you. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> and 
turn in your books to uh, page 55. That'll be our first song. Or our song for the lesson. Page, or uh, number 55, rather. We'll sing all verses of this. Beyond this land of far being, losing and leaving, far beyond the lost air, dark and bitter, and far beyond the taking and the bereaving, lies the summer land of bliss, land beyond so fair and bright, land beyond. thinking of your favorite scenes from the movie Forrest Gump. One of my favorites is where <laughs> Forrest is on his boat and he comes by and Lieutenant Dan sitting in the wheelchair on the dock and he's sitting there. Then he bails into the water and leaves the boat and the boat runs all over the bank. It's one of my favorite scenes. What I want to think about this evening, if you'll remember when Lieutenant Dan becomes his first mate and Forrest Gump has become a triple captain, then they're not catching the game shrimp for whatever reason. I think it's not for lack of effort, lack of knowledge more than anything. But uh, Lieutenant Dan tells Forrest Gump, he said, Gump, maybe you ought to pray about it. So the next thing you see, you see Lieutenant Dan sitting in the back of the church, and here's Gump up there in the front singing. The next thing you know, they're out in the in the sea, in the Gulf. And then here's Lieutenant Dan sitting on this little crate deal up on the crow's nest, sitting up in here, and a storm approaches. Right before, he's, right before the storm comes in, he hollers at Gump. He said, Gump, now where's your God at now? Then all of a sudden, <laughs> as Forrest Gump said, he said, at that time, God showed up <laughs> in the form of a hurricane. Question. Have you ever wondered where God is? whenever you recognize that 
God was still here, still present in your life, still in control of the situation, where were you at then? Reminds me of the story of Elisha where he goes into the cave to drown in his sorrows because things just wasn't going his way. Everybody was out to get him, so he thought. And he waited. And he waited up. He waited for God to come back. He wasn't in the cloud. He wasn't here. He wasn't there. God came by in a gentle breeze. Sometimes it may take a hurricane for us to realize that God's coming by. Sometimes he might just have to really reach out and just slap us silly before we see that he's here. And sometimes it may take the most minute thing to see God. Have you seen God today? Did you see the sunrise? Did you see the sunset? Did you see the leaves blow with the wind? Did you see the snow flurries Monday? All this is God. All of it's God. You may be here with us sometime this evening. And your curtain may be blacked out to where you can't see through the curtain. You may not be able to see God come back. Something may be in the way. Or you may not be able to recognize him when he does come by. Think about it. If you have any need this afternoon,
mask. They're not so bad if you don't wear glasses or hair. What do you think of when you think when you hear the word miracle? When you hear the word miracle, what do you think of? God. God. Okay. What else? Something above and beyond normal. Some okay. I think Steve's hit the definition. Yeah. What we would say uh, as far as is the definition of miracle. Something that we wouldn't expect normal to happen. Something that, uh, you want to say something miraculous that really don't, you know, fit in real good, but, but really it does. Because when a miracle happens, it is miraculous. Something back there. Uh, do miracles still happen today? Medical miracles still happen today. Yes. Children being born. Children being born is a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah. According to George Strait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about as close to God as you can get, ain't it? Especially if you're from Texas. <laughs> the uh, somebody, for instance, uh, midsummer. Uh, down at, uh, below, below the foot of the hill into the flatlands going to Arkansas. Well, that's the way y'all say it up here. You don't go, you don't go to Paragou or Jones or anything. You go to Arkansas. You know, that sounds farther, you know. And, but uh, just, just a mile below the foot of the hill, one of our uh, customer's daughters was in a serious car wreck. Dirt was blowing across the road there. A tractor trailer rig had stopped. And she had just barely gotten stopped. Tractor trailer rig behind her did not. Mm -hmm. Shoved her up and beat her. It is hard to fathom why she is alive today. But she is. Somebody might call that a miracle. But it's also with what Lauren put in, it's something that God is involved in. Yes? No? God allows it to happen. There are no man-caused miracles today. Yeah. There can be God-caused uh, unusual events, providential events, answers to prayer. It is worth caution when we talk about the supernatural and miracles who caused them, why did they happen? Dennis has brought up a point. Does Bible, the miracles that we've seen in the Bible, do they still happen to exist today? No. Yeah. No. No. They stopped whenever the apostles, the last apostles died, the last ones that had been laid on of hands of, of, uh, of the apostles, those that had been given that ability. And it would probably have been uh, late first century when those cease to exist. Now then, thinking of miracles. Think of Old Testament miracles. Something that would have happened in the Old Testament that we would have called miraculous miracles. That's the first one to come to my mind. Moses parting the Red Sea. Well, Moses was told to do it. God parted it. Uh, is there an answer other than God had his hand in it why that would have happened today? How that would have happened? You look at historians and, and they say, you know, they try to figure it out. You see the amount of water that was held back and then for the Israelites to walk across on dry ground. Not like where I was at yesterday down at Walter Ridge and walk across. It wasn't dry. Well, I had to come back with bigger shoes than what I left with. But they draw across on ground, dry ground. Miraculous. What else? Part of the Red Sea. What else? Curing a leper. Curing a leper. 
Yeah. Naaman. Naaman. Yeah. It wasn't the Jordan River that done it, was it? Because my understanding, the Jordan River is like Black River after a three-inch rain. It's nothing but a mud mud pit. And so, but uh, what? Going to Naaman, he was told what to do? What? Go to the Jordan and what? Dip seven times. Dip seven times. Okay. Uh, how come he could have he could have stopped at six? He could have. <laughs> but he was told that there were steps that had to be followed for healing to come into place. Okay, That required what? Faith. Faith. Yep. Faith. Yep. He had to believe that that was going to happen. Okay. What else? He had to obey. He had to obey. It happened. Yeah. And it required. I'm sorry, Steve. Noah building an ark. Noah building an ark. In faith. Yeah. What else we think of as far as Old Testament miracles? Uh, where the dry bones became. Yes, well, I think. Like, I, I'm not where that's at, but. Elijah laid on the Elijah, yeah. The valley. Yeah, and the dry bones became flesh. And uh, so. There was, God had to be involved in that. Wouldn't he think that? What about, uh, we go back and look at uh, Moses in front of Pharaoh. We, we, we already started with the part of the Red Sea after the children of Israel had left uh, Egypt and was headed out. Uh, what else? What comes to mind when you think of Moses and Pharaoh? Plagues. The plagues. Okay. Uh, the one that I'm thinking of is whenever Moses was told to throw his staff down and what? Became, became a snake. Okay. But that wasn't no problem because what did the prophets of Egypt do? Or the they throw they throw it down and snakes happen, you know. Now where does the miracle come in? In my mind. The snake ain't this, you know. And then he picked it back up. There's so many things about Moses and his staff that, you know, here I am in the quote-unquote well-doing business, and Moses can take a stick and go out here and beat a rock, and what? Water, Water comes forth. And we've beat some rocks before, <laughs> and we don't get, sometimes we don't get any water. But for that to happen, you know, in my mind, that, that that was a miracle. That was a miracle. What else? Thinking, we're well, thinking Old Testament now. I want to stay in Old Testament. The Passover. The Passover. You know, we look at the Passover. And when the death of the firstborn, uh, it's going to go into some, we'll get into some deeper on that as well. Okay. The, the came over, took all the firstborn, if what? Unless what? They didn't have blood on the threshold, okay, the door jams. Uh, but what did that require? Sacrifice. It required a sacrifice for the blood first. Okay. What else did it require? It required faith. I'm sorry, Sue? It required faith. Faith. And then, and I'm, I'm going to do like money ball. <laughs> Obedience. 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 You know. The, uh, so many of the miracles that we would call miracles today uh, that happened required a sacrifice, faith, and somewhat of obedience to do that. Uh, Steve brought up Noah and the ark. Could Noah have built a boat? Uh, sure. But it took faith in God that all this was going to happen, going to fall in place. It took the obedience, took the sacrifice of Noah and his family to do that. It took the sacrifice of uh, Moses to Moses and Aaron to follow through what God had commanded him to do to whenever he went through uh, 
trying to get the children of Israel out of Egypt. It took a sacrifice, faith, and obedience for Naaman. And it took all that just to make it happen. Just for that to fall into place. Now then, we look at some quote-unquote miraculous thing that, that had happened. A medical, and, and Ray brought it up a while ago, uh, a medical miracle. Does this three, same three factors fall into place? What, is, what did Jesus say? Uh, I want to think it's in Matthew or Mark 14. Uh, 13. Anyway, when Jesus said, if you pray, you first off, you believe it, that it happens. How many times have you seen it happen here? How many times have you seen it happen in your own lives, in your private prayers, uh, in other in dire times, and that's and that's that's the way I want to put it. Dire times. Somebody is <coughs> bad, sick, deathly sick on their deathbed, and prayer is <coughs> over. And how many times do you hear of a doctor say, "I haven't a clue why, but they are improving." You see a medical, a miracle today. And that still requires the faith of those who pray. God answers prayers. Yes, no, otherwise. Oh, always on our time? Uh, no, not always. <laughs> and when it's convenient for him or whenever it, he sees fit for us, then he answers it his way. Not always our way. But when we see things happen, how many times? How many times was Tammy there? And you know, I and know. and I think about the time that doctor called up and about and said she wouldn't live till midnight. Midnight he come out and he said, "Well, she won't live till morning." Morning, we're still praying and she still come out. Yeah, you know, and the faith the sacrifice, the obedience, the belief that it will happen. There comes, there's the faith where it comes in. Okay? Can you think of any other Old Testament, what we would think of as miracles? Manna from heaven. I'm sorry, Sarah? The manna from heaven. The manna from heaven. Okay. That uh, uh, he provided, God provided for the children of Israel while they were uh, on their 40 year vacation in the wilderness. But it was a lot straighter line to Canaan if they would have just done what they asked, what God had asked them to do, but no, they had to wander for 40 years before they get straightened out. But he provided. He provided the manna. He provided the quail. He provided uh, direction with the, with the fire and the clouds. But what happened whenever uh, for lack of better terms, the children of Israel became gluttonous. It spoiled. They didn't obey. They didn't do what uh, God told them to do. Gather, gather on the sixth day, on the seventh day. That way you don't have to. And then Monday you go back out, or on the first day you go back out and gather again. But then they don't, you know, the lack of obedience. Okay. What else? You know, and and it will sustain us. 
there's a and just miss it, Shelly. I'll get to you. Uh, there was a an old older guy at home that uh, all he'd ever done all his life was worked on the farm. And when he died, he had a little Chevy Love or a little Ford Courier truck with a 14 foot boat and a 20 horse motor and a couple of fishing rods and some baits and he had an old dog and a humpback brownie shotgun. And he was able to hunt, fish, care for his wife and and work and he, he's, he was able to sustain with very little. Give us this day our daily bread. We don't need a month's work in today. We don't need that. Yes, sir. The raising of the widow's son. Yes, that was said. We've not got into that yet. Right. We, we, no, that was New Testament. Uh, so was, the was there one in the Old Testament too? Right. Okay. Elijah. Oh, Elijah. Elijah. Okay. And, one of them. I can't remember which one. I, I was thinking the New Testament when you said that. But uh, there was there was faith and obedience involved with that. Uh, right. She she took care of him uh, during a famine, and then later he raised her son. Yeah. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong on that situation. Wasn't that where Elijah says, <laughs> God, you sent me into this nice lady, and she's taking care of me, and now you let her son die. What's going on here? Let's so raise him up. So something like that. Second Kings? Okay, uh, flip over to 2 Kings. I think this is right. 2 Kings chapter 4. I think this will be, be uh, what we're looking at. Let's back up to uh, verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 8. Let's begin reading. One day Elisha went on to Shuman where a healthy, or healthy, a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shumanite. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to her, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is it to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, no, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, and Eli as Elisha had said to her. Okay, first miracle. She was wealthy. Her husband was old. We don't know how old that the woman was. But she conceived, as Elisha said that she would. Beginning in verse 18. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers, and he said to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him up and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. Then she saddled the donkey and she said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she's kind of in a hurry. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shumanite. 
run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? And she answered, All is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, Tie up your garment, take your staff in your hand, and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, and go. And if anyone greets you, do not reply. And lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself upon him. The flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once back and forth into the house. And he went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he said, summoned Gehazi and said, Call this Shumanite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came, fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. <laughs> That's about like the dead bones, isn't it? You know, so... <clears throat> Question. Have you got enough faith to search out God in a situation whenever you need him the most, such as this humanite woman did? She had enough faith in Elisha that, first off, she knew what? She knew what first? It was like in the first verse that we read that he was a man of God. <clears throat> he had told her that she would conceive. Third, she did. Uh, her son died. Then he lived. Well, before he lived, she had enough faith to search out Elisha. And how many times do we get into a situation that we wait until a dire situation before we search out God. Sometimes as a last resort, sometimes we get to that point, we think we put we put faith in this, we put faith in that, and then then sometimes when, when all else fails, oh, let's pray. You know, let's let's ask God to help us. When a lot of times our first turn should be to God and then worry about the other things that come to come into play. Thoughts. There was also another son raised by uh, Elijah. This was a widow of Zarephath, that the one which she fed him, and then he raised her son. And where's that at, Miss Shirley? First Kings seventeen. First Kings seventeen. He didn't sneeze. <laughs> Neat. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, and this is the one where uh, she was more of, of feeding, feeding Elijah here than what we were. Now, uh, Seventeen and seventeen of First Kings. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took, her, he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? 
Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. The word of the Lord in your mouth is true. How many people we come across today that would see us and, oh, the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. Mm. It's all. Anyway, what else when we're, we're talking about miracles? And I want to stay, I want to stay in the Old Testament as much as we can. We don't know how much a little bit of flour was, but the flour probably increased daily. <laughs> we, we take it out and we just keep taking and taking and taking and it never... What else? Ah, yeah, and the fiery furnace. Yeah, and uh, um, that required uh, sacrifice, faith, and obedience. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Without, uh, without obedience, without faith, without the sacrifice to put them in the situation that they were, uh, they'd have just been piles of ashes. What about Daniel and the lion's den? The Lord shut up the, the, the lion's mouth. And then, uh, then what happened after that? They swapped places with, in other words, the lions got fed <laughs> shortly thereafter. But it wasn't Daniel. What else? The walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho. Okay. Uh, we could have marched around them six times and, and, and uh, made our clanging noise and, and uh, crashed our cymbals and blowed our trumpets and and, and all that and uh, or we could have played guitars and, and set set at home and, and said that we were going to do this and what would have happened to the walls no it required the obedience to to do what what was commanded the walls of Jericho what else The talk, <laughs> talking donkey. <laughs> yeah, that's like Joshua, the son of Nun. You know, <laughs> it had no father because he was the son of Nun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the talking donkey. You know, so many things. The, the burning bush, what we would have thought is a miracle. You know, uh, and it never consumed itself. You know, uh, the. All the things that happened as far as what we would call miraculous required the sacrifice, the faith, the obedience primarily for it to come, come into place. Now, I, want, I don't want you to start thinking ahead of what we're going to try to do this quarter as much as we can. We're going to deal with the miracles of Jesus in our Wednesday evening class. And we're going to look at those and start start thinking about them. Don't start thinking about them for 15 minutes. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll start dwelling on them then next week. But the miracles of Jesus that he done. Uh, something 
Have you ever, have you had miraculous things happen in your life? Other than, other than children being born and, uh, you know. Can you jump to just find that a little tighter? Do we have unusual things happen? Sure. Unusual, okay. Do we have unexplainable things? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we should ever, if we say, uh, your miracles happen like they did in the Bible, no. Sometimes we tend to them back so far that we forget that God still is I think it, and I think that goes to what Dennis has, yeah. has brought up very well. Yeah, he just said it. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he's let somebody say make millions off of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, but uh, uh, and as, as Dennis says, both of you said, we get to the point in our lives that we mature spiritually, mm -hmm. and we take those things that aren't. How many, you know, Kay Gowan, you, you, most of you all know have heard of Kay Gowan, who worked with, uh, she's a corny girl, let's put it that way. I mean, her parents was raised up, you know, and, and uh, I know all of her brothers or sisters, you know, and, uh, and Jimmy, her husband is a dad old boy. And whenever, whenever they were corny, and, and I've not been around Jim in a long time, uh, but he would always end his prayer this way. It would always say, and Lord, if it be your will, come quickly. How many of us can, are we to that point? And I think that kind of goes with what Steve said and, and Dennis said, that we mature to the point that we, we ask for this, we ask for that, we ask for otherwise. But sometimes when we get to the point in maturity level in our lives, in our spiritual lives, that we can say, God, if it be your will, come quickly. Whatever happens, happens. It's, it's your will, and, and I'm ready for it. Whatever. And uh, that's a level of faith. And maturity. And maturity. They're just, just prayers that we don't realize that either have been answered or they've not been answered yet. They've not been answered the way yeah. we want them answered. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't, he understands something that we can't. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, he has the plan. And we can't see past page 13 of it. You know, it's, you know, we can't see the whole big picture. We, we know what he wants for us. But sometimes what we want for us and what he wants for us is miles apart 
on what he wants is on page 492 and we're on page 13 and we're not there yet. Miracles. Things happen in our lives that we can't explain. Uh, no explanation. Whether it's medical or whatever. We don't know why. Uh, we cannot we cannot fathom it. You know, happening. It's unexplainable. Uh, whenever Somebody's not supposed to live and they walk. You know, whenever somebody's uh, in an accident and they live. Uh, things are unexplainable. Those are when God comes into play, when our faith comes into play, where prayers uh, are answered at the right time. And when prayers are prayed in the faith that Groanings. Where have you heard that word? Groanings. But uh, anyway, okay. Any other miracles that you can think of in the Old Testament? Well, where Elijah poured all the water, he just kept pouring the water on the altar that he built, and then the fire came down and like it even consumed the stones and the other people's offering. Was that Elijah? But the, the battle with the uh, um, servant of Baal. Yeah. The priest of Baal. And, uh, but he showed them. He showed them. God showed them through Elijah. God showed up. God showed up. Yeah. <laughs> with a midget. Yeah. David and Goliath. I'm sorry? David and Goliath. David and Goliath. <laughs> David was a scrawny little punk. He wasn't supposed to, you know, go up against somebody that's nine feet tall and and win. So you don't think David's a good shot? No. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sometimes, sometimes it takes the sometimes it takes the smallest stone <laughs> is all it takes. <laughs> Smooth stone. Uh, jagged stones don't fly very well. Yeah. What else? Sarah becoming pregnant after she was okay. not physically able to do that anymore. Yep. Yeah. At her age? At her age. Yes. And uh, uh, Sarah, Abraham becoming parents. Uh, and didn't she laugh at God? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she laughed. She laughed. Okay. It was directed. You know, I would have thought that it would have been directed. Uh, note to sell. Uh, if, don't laugh. <laughs> what else? Any other things? was it between Genesis and the birth of Christ? Around 600? 400? 4,000. Okay. 4,000 years. Uh, beginning in Genesis chapter 3 at how many ever months old or old that the world was then. And then you have that prophecy of, of the foretelling of Christ that happened 4,000 year, 4, years away. So, I was yeah. thinking about between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the same time. Okay. You think the end of the Old Testament is the beginning of the Old Testament. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, you take all those prophecies and all that time in there, and then how many times was somebody had to remind of that? Of course, it was written, uh, and you just, you just remember it. And then some... It'd been nice if you had an idea 
of whenever Christ died on the cross and the church was established. And it'd be neat if, if there was somebody there and said, that's what they was talking about. You know. If they read the scripture, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. There's never been but one man that walked the earth that was all knowing. As smart as those people were, may have been in the Old Testament, you still didn't know everything. God had the other wing of it. God was the only one that's all knowing. So all of those miracles, all the miracles in the New Testament, all came from God. However you want to look at it. God showed up. That's good when the end on. That's where we're going to stop this week. Uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your attention. That's what we're going to try to do over the next, uh, this quarter. We're going to look at the miracles of Jesus and, and see how far that takes us. See you next week.